see, I mean, I guess th there's definitely such a thing as too much of anything, but sure. you know, I, I just feel like stuff back there is cooler because sometimes, like, I'll see uh streamers or or just you know friends that I have who are really into comics and movies and stuff, and they they have like all the action figures in the back going on and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, it's just cool as hell. But yeah, man, it's 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 good to be here with you, and I, I you know. The world needs this, and I, I need this right now, too, because I can't lie to you. The, the, you know, politics is driving me insane right now and having to readjust because I work in the space. You feel me? So, yeah. like, I can't I can't take a few weeks off from this. Like, I have to stay in it. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's always great to just be with good people to remind you, like, there's more to life going on than whatever the news reels are, whatever yeah. challenges we, we're facing politically. And honestly, you know, no matter who's in office, it's always some type of BS we got to deal with because that's the world. Yeah, so it's all good, man. It's it's all good. And yeah, no, I feel the same way, dude. It's like it's there. There's something about like when you you just bury yourself in the shit that's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's mind numbing, man. Yeah, it is. And then you can kind of forget like, oh, my mom makes a mean pot roast and she's cooking on Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, <laughs> like stuff like that. You know what I mean? It, it just and also, you know, as you know, I've, I've uh, I made the decision to go sober a little over a month ago and I'm sticking yeah. to it. So I'm like having to readjust to just how I deal with stuff. And I, you know, really accepting and realizing that, like, oh man, you did have a problem because it's just like, yeah. oh, I'm uncomfortable. Where's the dopamine? But you got to find it elsewhere. You, you know, you, you got to find it in other places. But it's it's great to be here with you, dude. So 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 great. I'm I'm, I'm like really excited to build this because it like it, it's yeah, it's been a there's so much on online that's so negative and so just you know everything is this that it's there's a lot of divisiveness there's a lot of anger and i think what, what people forget about when it comes to life we do need to celebrate it too we need to celebrate the loved ones celebrate the good things in life and you know it when we were talking about doing this it was like let's talk about stuff let's raise awareness if we need to let's talk about movies that we love talk, instead of just bashing bashing shit everywhere we go absolutely and i can't even lie you know like i've been finding myself that like okay you jackson you're starting to get into the into the being part of the negativity, you yeah. know what I mean? And so, you know, I, I we all got to be better than that. So I'm really happy that we're here. And our first conversation is just about something that's very near and dear to my heart. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> we got the Batman going on, you wow. know what I'm saying? Now, I, I still got to go through this, but th this is actually my dad's. And, and because of my dad, I'm, I'm, I'm really into Batman. And, and that, just, that's how you were introduced to Batman? Yeah, that's how I was introduced. Man, my dad introduced me to so much stuff because you know my my parent my people are, are older. I'm I'm 32. My my uh, parents are in their 70s. Yeah. So I grew up listening to like jazz and rock and roll and and all types of stuff. And and uh, my dad's really into DC, especially DC, more, even more than Marvel. So yeah, man, it, it's it it's been great to just have that influence in my life. And as well, I what was the first uh, Batman he introduced you to? Man, but oh, the bat, the animated series for sure. Gotcha. Definitely the Batman, the animated series, which is some of the best uh, Batman works that there are. With uh, Kevin Conroy, rest in peace. You know what I mean? Um, he's just the most iconic Batman voice to me, at least. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I think that thinking back, some of my favorite, my favorite uh, episode from the animated series, still to this day, is um, I don't remember what it's called, but. It was uh, when they introduced Mr. Freeze. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's his conclusion was a bit shaky, you know, like everybody must suffer and die. Like maybe not that, but, you know, you just it, it was just a really powerful in terms of how human uh, he is and how broken he is, you know, being a scientist and, um, you know, basically the company that he worked for inadvertently caused his wife to die. Yeah. And he just that's all he had left. And he was using that. And one of the things that I like most about Batman um, is and, and some some fans are, are wanting to see this uh, uh, kind of shift. But I like how 
how human and realistic it is, despite the fact that it's very unrealistic because it's you know the su- superhero comics and stuff. But fair enough, yeah. you know, like <laughs> like for instance, like um, because of Batman's dedication and devotion to what he does, his personal life is a mess. Um, you know, he he he's and I just appreciate that because it's like you know this man isn't perfect. The reason he does what he does is because he's broken. And in order for him to stay is is deep in that pit, he has to push everybody out. And that's what he actively does. Like all the Robins, eventually people are like, okay, man, I've, I've kind of had it with you because they want to be close to him. They want to help him. And he's like, no, I, I have to stay here. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. So what, what about, what about you? What's some of the first uh, Batman influences that, that you were exposed to? Well, yeah, I, it's funny because I was never a comic book guy and it, 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 I kind of missed out on that. I kind of looked back. I'm like, oh, damn, I wish I had been on that wave. So I discovered, I, you know, through the cartoons as well. I mean, slightly earlier, I would catch reruns of Super Friends. So it was a very sanitized. Yeah. This is a happy go lucky version of where he said teamwork, he, teamwork every week. I'll work with you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and I, I mean, yeah. I was a weird kid because Aquaman was my favorite villain because I, I, I love sharks. So I thought, oh, cool. I could talk to sharks. Uh, yeah. so, but <laughs> yeah. first introduction to him and then, you know, was kind of like I, I, I would catch episodes, old episodes of the Adam West. And I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I'm like, this is the goofiest superhero ever. <laughs> I didn't and it, know and it, the- right. <laughs> and even back then in the 60s, because was that was was that on in the 60s or the 70s? I think 60s, I believe, before my time even. Yeah. Yeah. Be, yeah. And I think I think even some of the point was, was it uh, to be a little goofy. Um, yeah. Matter of sure. fact, here, here we go with that with the Adam West right here. We got yeah, the, there we, he is. we got the Adam West, and I, I don't remember the name of the guy who who plays. Uh, Robin. I got, we got to look it up. I'll look it up. Yeah. We, yeah, yeah we it's, did you watch this? Did you was this even on your radar? Was this on your dad's radar? Oh uh, no, my I mean, the, the, I I never really watched much of this. I saw a, a couple episodes on Amazon Prime because my uh, my dad has it. I love the scenes gotcha. where they're like climbing up the side of a building, all <laughs> <laughs> this stuff. And and Adam West, I, I remember when I first really got more familiar with him because he was doing a uh, uh, voice in in Family Guy, uh, the mayor. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's where I first got uh, got familiar with him until, you know, before I really even realized what was up uh, with, with this. But yeah, there's that- just been so much evolution. Because what, what was it? Uh, eight, 85 years of Batman. I think a, a couple a couple months ago was Batman's 85th birthday. Like I think so. Yeah, it's it's a, it, and it's amazing. Like, I, I think you you kind of, you know, I was kind of going through the history of him today just because again i i I didn't know much about the comics uh three even though i work in uh for a pop culture website that we deal with that stuff all the time it was never in my wheelhouse and so i was doing this research the past few days and just kind of looking into the stories and it really resonated why um there are certain elements of the story and certain multiverse i guess you know they've got the certain storylines that i just resonated with and it's always mm-hmm. the darker ones always yeah. The darker ones. yeah and and, and you know you, you're you're pretty into that as well why don't you why don't you tell us a little a little bit about your work with uh uh you know how how uh critiquing movies and just your history with horror movies and joe blow and, and all of oh. that okay sure um well okay <laughs> uh gosh i so i was um I was an actor. That's what I wanted to do. And I, you know, it's, I wasn't really a, a committed to it. I, you know, I, it was one of those things I had a family and I didn't really, I, I, I think looking back now, cause I'm acting again now, I just wasn't ready. Simple yeah. as that. And uh, I, I started, you know, reading like in cool news, uh, Joe Blow is one of the sites, all these uh, coming soon, all these sites about movies and pop culture. And I was like, this is new. I used to read ain't it cool news reviews of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And stuff oh, like yes. That. that I watched man, Buffy the Vampire. So I, I watched that. We watched that in my house like Dude, every week. Every best week. show ever. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's it's still on, it's on Disney Plus. I'm pretty sure. Probably, yeah. yeah like I have yeah. the whole series. Like, I come on, I have. The and whole it, 
and it's such a 90s show too like when i was mm -hmm. watching it recently i was like oh this is this is so 90s it but is yeah it's it, it's great it's great what was up B buffy and xander buffy. cordelia yeah um willow yeah. don't forget yeah willow. willow was the witch wasn't she the witch <laughs> she was yeah yeah she was the witch and she was also in uh american american pie american i think pie, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah those movies yeah I yeah. interviewed her for American Pie for the oh, yeah? Uh, yeah the last one that they did the American Reunion or whatever it was or American Wedding one of those yeah. I, I I it's a that's that's something we can get onto later on a touch oh yeah video. oh yeah those are movies yeah. we won't that, see again <laughs> for oh a while. yeah matter of fact I'm writing that down right now we are gonna have to do a whole a, a whole Buffy the Vampire Slayer series man fuck yeah dude I love it oh yeah. <laughs> and you know J J Jimmy Jimmy's uh Jimmy's a, a lot more humble than I am uh but yeah Jimmy's interviewed all the coolest people all the and you would never know unless you saw it and unless he told you but well, that's that's cool as hell man they're people you know like I there's a reason like when I first started doing this um I was just reviewing cheesy horror films right I was like video releases my first review was I believe saw 2 that was my yeah. first review and I, I I was like, because I love horror. I grew up, I was kind of a snob when I was a kid. Like when movies <laughs> came out, I like I liked horror and I liked foreign films. I wasn't into the, I didn't like the big blockbusters oftentimes. I, I, aside from like the Jaws or the, you know, like E.T. or something like that. You know, of course, you can't not like those. But there was a kind of disconnect. And I, working for, when I, when I met the guy who runs John Fallon, a great guy, he runs Arrow in the Head, the sister side of Joe Blow. I was telling him I, I might work for another dude, a friend of mine, writing reviews. And he's like, You should apply here. I did. And I got in. And it was one of those experiences where I quickly, my first interview job was for a movie called Oh My God, let me see if I can remember You, Me, and Dupree. No. Was it you mean Dupree? Maybe it was. It was a uh, oh god, what was her name? Um, I am so blanking on this. It was uh, oh the girl from Almost Famous. From Why Almost am famous? I? Kate, oh, let me, Kate, let me Kate, see. Kate Hudson. That's it. Kate, Kate Hudson. Hudson. Okay. And it okay. was uh, that was my first. It was a press conference, and it was weird, and it was fun, and I had a good time, and then. You know, I just kind of started writing reviews for the main site and and becoming a part of Joe Blow and doing all these interviews. And that, I think, is where I don't review as much anymore, just because I, 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 I think we have enough people trashing everything in general, yeah. you know, yeah. but yeah. I like interviews because I like getting to know people. I like yeah. you know, when I do my job, you have and a lot of people complain about this. You have like, okay, you're going to do an interview. You've got the interview set up. You go to the thing. You got four minutes. You got four minutes to walk in a room, make an impression, ask a few questions. So oftentimes you're not going to get shit. And if you go in with the idea that, well, I want to get this information, this information, this information, you're going to have a mess. Yeah. You know what that I'm makes saying? sense. That makes sense too, especially with that time limit. You never know exactly how the interaction is going to go, and you don't. and you mentioned too, like just being able to come in there more naturally. You kind of, I, I can see how that interaction is just more authentic that way, instead of like this is what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. look, it's sometimes you know I've certainly had interviews that haven't gone the way I wanted to, or yeah, of course, weren't, of course. weren't terribly great, but for the most part. You know, look, people want to sell their movies. People want you to see. I, I, I you know, I, I did the, uh, I did the junket for, um, uh, the Dark Knight. So I, you know, I, I have my, I, I have the Batman tie into that too. <laughs> oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that is, and 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 now, now that we did circle back around to to that, how was, what was your kind of overall impression or, or um, feeling for the Batman universe when you did that for the Dark? Oh, I, I see. I when the Dark Knight came out, I I, I still do. It's a, an amazing film. Let's let's. That's the uh, one with Heath Ledger, right? The dark, yeah, yeah, the Dark Knight. Yeah. yeah. So obviously, no one's just no one's no one's ever played that role like him before. Rest in peace. No, no, Heath, Heath, and it's see, 
again, the internet, man. I remember when he was announced, everyone's like, oh, the worst choice ever. Oh, my God, he's going to be terrible. I'm like, yeah, he was so terrible. Yeah. Come on, people. And, and, and you know, stuff like that, too, kind of teaches you to give stuff a chance. You yeah. know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, it's 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 all about the writing. And, um, like, I kind of had a similar, a similar feeling for Robert Pattinson and Matt Reeves, the Batman. And a lot of yeah. people did. It was like... He doesn't really seem much like a, a Bruce Wayne, but he nailed it. I mean, he he re he really nailed that character. And Heath Ledger again. And and thinking back to because I was I think that movie came out in 08 or something like that. Uh, the Dark Knight. The Batman? Believe. The Witch. Uh, no, that's uh, more recent. The Dark. The, well, the Dark, the Dark Knight. Knight. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me see. It's uh, I, I, some sometime around then. Yeah, that was 2008. Um, good, good job. Okay, cool. Yes, my my memory still serves me well. Um. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I can kind of see how maybe people would have thought that he wasn't quite the right guy for it. But for I mean, sure. for he sure. re he really nailed it because at the end of the day, the Joker is he's nuts. He's completely insane, and it's you know he he uh, method acted that perfectly. Um, yeah. He really did because you know other people who have played Joker, you got Jack Nicholson. It's just a different movie, just a, a sure. totally for different sure. movie with the with Tim Burton. Uh, cause that came out in late eighties, 89, I believe, yeah. which I, I suppose that was maybe the, 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 the movie that got, um, Batman kind of more just into the, 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 the real life actors. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, you had obviously the, um, Adam West and stuff like that, no. but it's so different because I feel like as time has, has progressed, Batman has gotten darker and the and just kind of more consequential to the things that go on. I mean, in the Batman, the Riddler was a he was a terrorist. He yeah. flooded the city. He killed hundreds of thousands of people just just because. And then the Penguin. Oh my God, the Penguin. <laughs> I mean, just it, it was. And, and you know, you see everything before everybody else. I know. I, and I, now I know. Yeah. I know it was so difficult for you to just to just tell me Dude. what was going on because oh. That last episode, I oh was like God. just jonesing to go, dude. There, and I told you, there's a moment there that's going to blow your mind, and you're going to be like, that that moment. And I'm not going to spoil it because there's people yeah, that yeah, haven't yeah. seen it. Yeah. But holy fuck, that was amazing. It really was, man. It really yeah. was. And 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 first, can we say that Colin Farrell? I mean, the makeup in this in this thing, he looks right? like a totally different person. He He's like, unrecognizable. unrecognizable. He really is. Yes. He really is. And and you've interviewed Colin a, a number of times. He's a and, lovely and, man. One yeah, of the you, nicest guys in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And 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 I, you know, uh, and we'll put links into that so people can check it out and, and everything like that. Cool. Um, but yeah, it's it's just, and, and he's Irish, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Absolutely. Irish, and <laughs> he 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 uh he uh has that that northeast accent down perfect. Yeah. Without you know, without giving away spoilers, I, I think that we can you know kind of just allude to how just despicable this man's character is. I mean, it is th <laughs> this show just did such a good job, not even just with him, but kind of with everyone involved, really painting the picture like what's really up with Gotham City, like yeah. what you know, like how, how bad is that place really? And it's kind of like new, you know, it, Gotham to me is like NYC at its worst, <laughs> you sure. know, like it, it, it at its worst. And you know, for, for whatever it's worth, the Penguin definitely earned his place at the top of uh, Gotham's crime rackets. But uh, he, he he certainly will never see a moment of happiness. No, no. Well, the here's the thing that that made this series, and I, I mean, we this is kind of how we bonded because of this series. Uh, mm -hmm. There's something really beautiful in allowing a villain moments to shine and be good and be decent all of the villains here you have the 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 sophia um what a marvelous performance from her the yes. actress and i'm spacing on her name so i'm gonna I, have Christi to i think it's christina something I believe. yeah yeah is she's uh or something yeah she's um she's such you you understand why she's doing what she does and you understand you you understand in a weird way why he is doing what he does yeah you know what i'm saying because yeah. you're kind of likable you kind of i mean 
yeah, that one moment that was like, ah. Uh, yeah, at the end, yeah, at the end of it, it was like, oh, oh no, no, no. <laughs> you knew, you knew. You're like, yeah, you're and you saw it coming too. Like before, before it happened, it was like, no, 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 no. And, and yeah, we we can't say we can't say anything more. We don't we don't want to spoil it. No. But but, but let, I mean, let, even here's what I liked about like I remember watching the first episode, and it was so long ago, for both of us on this. I remember the vibe just being so unique and so spectacular because it was it was funny. It was dark. Mm -hmm. It was this it really was an extension of the film except the Batman, but I think it's better. Yeah, yeah, in a lot of ways it 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 really is and I think that it shows just the brilliance of the, of the writing and the production because the Batman was not in the movie. No. I mean in the show rather. He he no. he wasn't in it at all. And I think one of the coolest things about that as well, um, just in terms of the the possibilities that Matt Reeves has, I mean, he can make he can make more stand uh, shows about other characters, you know, like um, yeah, you know, we haven't seen, we don't know who all's. I mean, I, I would be highly surprised if the Penguin is not in the Batman too. I, that would just be very, and he's already casted in it, I believe. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he's, he'll have, he'll play a bigger, uh, probably a bigger role. I have a feeling. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, and so you know, but I mean, we haven't really seen the Joker. We haven't seen the Scarecrow. We haven't seen any of those people. So it'd be cool to see what Matt Reeves does. Um, uh, for for other maybe HBO series. My guess is there will probably be three. I mean, there's typically three movies. Um, yeah. Especially when they're received well. But uh, but yeah, I thought that just. My my favorite, I mean, Christopher Nolan really nailed it, but the Christopher Nolan's Batman universe is so different than Matt Reeves. So different. It's, it's so different. I feel like Matt Reeves is like more, uh, it's it's like you're reading one of the newer comics to me. Um, okay. And well, just like, it, just like you. Back to the original though, in a way, like the how the series started was detective stories. Yes. Yes. You know? Mm-hmm. And that's some, and that's some of why. Uh, and and I thought that the uh, in the Batman they did a really good job showing that detective aspect uh, yes. of Bruce as well, because like, he was working with uh, Commissioner Gordon. He was kind of around everything, figuring stuff out, and all of that from I think it was a uh, 1939 when the first issue came out, so and it's great. you know it's got 10, 10 cent comics, and I'm you know just like you, I feel like I've kind of missed. Um, missed out on a lot of the comics as well and i want to get deep deeper into it because it just seems like an untapped realm at least for me mm -hmm. um Same. Of, of yeah, me too. so much cool stuff i mean I, i've seen like in, in the comics like they'll have you know like the xenomorphs from the alien universe like batman versus the xenomorphs the you know mark the avengers versus the. i mean there's just so much cool stuff going on wolverine versus the predator you know well, it's so, easier, to, you know, it's so much easier to go get creative and put pen to paper and say, let's create this story. Let's create this comic comic character. Let's create this this timeline movies. It's a lot harder to do that because, you know, you're you got so much going into them. And I mean, look at the recent Joker, the, the Joker sequel. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see it, but I, I apparently I, I, I'm not missing much that I didn't see it. I have a feeling that see, I didn't watch it. And I, yeah. I like the Joker. I like I like the I did too. I, I like Todd Phillips. I, I think Todd is a he's an interesting director because he pissed off a lot of people with Hangover too. If I don't know if you remember when the Hangover one came out, everyone loved it, but then the sequels came out and suddenly people were like, no, this sucks. But I think that there is I like sometimes I like a filmmaker that wants to shake things up. And and you know, I I, I think with the Joker, he he didn't quite. I loved Joaquin's performance. I want to see this new one. I am going to watch it because I think there's. I have a weird feeling it's going to be something that kind of ages better than it actually upon its first or initial yeah. release. I think yeah. there's something there. From well, from from what from what and again, I haven't seen it, so there's only so much I can say about it. I, I and I, I I really liked the first one too. I thought it was. I thought it was just interesting, an interesting mm -hmm. kind of stand, you know, standalone series, different version. Because you know, in this one, the Joker was like way older than Bruce Wayne. Because in the first one, he kind of he goes up to the gate, and I remember Bruce Wayne's just a kid, um, and he thinks that um, 
his dad is his dad. So it's just a real unique world. From yeah. what I saw about the second one, it's like they kind of like they turned it into a musical. And they from did. what I yeah, and and from what I read from from the critiques about it, it, it was like, all right, we're gonna do a second movie, but I don't really know what to do with it. But again, I haven't seen it, so there's yeah. I, I can't really I can't really critique on it. But yeah. I will give props to the first one for sure because I just thought it was it was just and and, and also an interesting look into you know the the, the struggles of mental health because you know some people. Uh, every life is rough, you know what I'm saying. But some people really, really struggle with in ways that you know a lot. Most people just can't relate to. Um, yeah, and, and his well, character I, really did. I think people are. I think you know it's like these characters in a weird way, especially like characters like Batman or the the more I, Batman sticks out to me, especially just because he is he's not a happy guy. He is yeah, no. Not, you know, no. there's nothing happy about his life. You know what I'm saying? And Even he, though he's got it all. Exactly. Exactly. But it, I also also think that's kind of the. Like, I, I wonder if that's like a you know the the rich guy's like oh yeah look at oh it's so, so tough I have everything you know I have to I, I don't have to struggle at all but it's so tough so tough like, <laughs> yeah we're like fuck off. <laughs> yeah and, and 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 it's but the interesting thing too is it's like um again like it. Bruce Wayne cannot be Batman if he heals himself. You, you mm -hmm. can't. He's nope. not going to have the motivation to risk his life the way that he does or even be as dedicated to solving crimes as he is. And then on the other hand, you got Bruce Wayne, the billionaire and the, the philanthropy and stuff that, that um, he can or doesn't do or does do within yeah. Gotham. And I think that was interesting from the first Batman because when the, mayor, the, the new mayor, I can't recall her name, but she was talking to Bruce when he uh, went to one of those funerals and she was like, you know, you got all the means in the world. There's a lot of stuff you could be doing for the city and I don't see you doing it. And at the end of the Batman, he was, you know, kind of realizing this all can't be about my personal vengeance. So perhaps in the second one, we'll see Bruce develop a bit more, you know, not be as much of a recluse, um, come out more into the spotlight and uh, and, and be more of a participant in yeah. the day-to-day the -day activities of the city. So I think there's just so much room for it. And then we got over here, we got Jared, Jared Leto, and that that was from uh what was it, Zack Snyder's uh yeah, that was the Suicide Squad, right? Suicide yeah. Squad, and yeah, yeah. and well, no, wasn't it a job? Wait, no, which one was it? Was it Zack Snyder? Yeah, it was Zack Snyder's because then they re-released it as by hold on. I liked see, I liked James Gunn's version of Suicide Squad quite a bit. Yeah. yeah Jan um what was uh I'm trying James, to James Gunn, did he do the original uh Suicide Squad movie? No, that would be I'm going to look it up. I, I'm some for some reason spacing on his name. It was speaking uh, of James Gunn though, he's got the new the I mean he's he's ahead of DC Studios now. So exactly well oh, David, David Ayers that. David Ayer did the, David the Ayers, original okay. Suicide Squad. I feel like he did have some. I here's the thing. This is a controversial take. I didn't think Jared Leto was a problem with that movie. I I think he was. Had he had the movie been about him and Margot, I think there would have been something there. Mm -hmm. I think it would have been more interesting. But they were trying to. It was just too much, and it wasn't. Uh, and I don't know if it was how much of it's a studio, how much it's a director, like messing it and saying, yeah, we got to shorten this. We got to make this more because that's that is that does become a problem with these films. It's like, OK, how do you know the studio is like, well, we have to sell to everybody. And, uh, you, you know, I think that's why probably why Joker became a musical, <laughs> because, people, yeah. you know, fuck it. I'm going to make what I want to make. But yeah. I, yeah, exactly. And I I but I do. It is by far my least favorite Joker. It's the goofiest. Yeah, yeah, and, and and me too. And I also think, I mean, just for the whole, you know, that that whole series that he was in, I, I don't. It just kind of, it doesn't seem like there was that much effort. Not, not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but rather, I think a better way to say it was that much focus on on the Joker's character in terms yeah. of, you know, I think it was just like, all right, we got the Joker in it, and we're gonna make it an interesting. Because Zack Snyder's take on, you know, Bat Batfleck and stuff, um, 
Uh, my first, I think that the coolest action scene from all the Batman movies was probably that warehouse scene with Batman from the Batman versus Superman. Um, oh, okay. The where the warehouse scene where he was rescuing Superman's mom, that was cool. But Zach Zach Snyder, um, I think I think that his approach his approach because. I thought the soup the Superman movies were great because I think yeah. people kind of and I think I've also kind of been a little unfair to to Zack Snyder's take on DC, but it just kind of seems like because he did the three hundred and it just seems like yeah. we're kind of out of that era to where like all you got to do is make things look really cool. We're kind of out of that era, which is good because now it's like no, you got to really write a good script and yeah. you. Really he really, it, 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 you know, because it's hard to wow people anymore with special effects. Yeah, uh, which is some of why um, Heath Ledger's take on the Joker was just so great because it was like, man, this guy, this guy is just completely out of it, and his goal was just to show everyone's as screwed up as I am deep down inside, and yeah. he didn't, he didn't win that war. And, yeah. and and that's some of why I like Batman so much because. You know, it, it's it. He doesn't have any superpowers. He's got money, and he knows how to fight, and he knows how to do stuff. But he's just a man. It's just and, a nihilist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. He, he's just a nihilist. He's super angry, but he means well. You know, he he, he means well, and um, he does. He 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 cares about people. Well, it's and, it's such an interesting thing because you have so many histories with this guy. Like I said, looking back into the comics, uh, you know, and I, I remember too the goofy days of the the Justice League. They're all buddies. Woo, we're gonna yeah. come together. I, I, you know, a lot of the reasons Batman went dark it, or lightened up for those times in the series, you know, all, there a lot of it was censorship. A lot of that they didn't they they had to tone down the comic books because they were too dark, too loaded with horror. There's always been a kind of a battle with the darker elements of of, of entertainment, whether it's comic book, what, video games, movies. There's always that. Oh well, that that can warp people's minds. I'm like, well, I mean, no. It's a little too late for that. A little too late for that. <laughs> We're already so the cat's already out of the bag when it comes to that in the United States. I mean, we just elected Donald Trump again, so you know, it's a little it's a little late for that. But it is. It is. It, we, it, it does are, make sense, are. though. Yeah, right. It, exactly. Um, but yeah, no. It's just it's 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 just I, I've always just really thought that um, that the Batman was really cool. And there's uh, there's a uh, and I want to get more into this. There's a new series. Uh, it, they're they're in the comics right now, but it's called Absolute Batman. Oh, and they got Absolute Batman, Absolute Superman, and it's like the same characters, but it's just written slightly different. So, like an absolute oh. Batman, th this is him right here. Oh, he's cool. He's <laughs> he's he's not wealthy. Like he doesn't come from from wealth. Um, he's more of a normal everyday guy. Still, you know, very well trained and all of that stuff. But um, his his middle piece that he has that bat can turn into an axe. And his and his ears, like he can pull them out, and it's a knife, and he's stabbing people <laughs> in this series. And, and Superman, absolute Superman, he also it, it, his stories, like all of their backstories, are slightly different. And in wow. this, like his powers work differently. Like you know, Superman's like a basically a battery, a, a solar battery. Wow. But in, but in this one, like he kind of has to charge his powers up, and they run down. So like he's not just constantly really strong. So they giving him a bit more of a handicap. And then Absolute Wonder Woman, she's like the god of war. So oh. it's it, it's like, and that's one of the th cool things too. I think about the time we're in because these characters have been out for so long. You know, th there there's so many different versions of the story that you can tell, and it just it just kind of makes it interesting that 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 multiverse approach. Um, but I'm really interested to see what uh matt reeves is gonna do in the yeah. second batman again i i think it's pretty clear that the penguin's gonna be in there but do you th do you think he'll be the main villain or or do you have any any idea of what to expect at all well they certainly hinted at the joker um, yeah yeah barry cogan uh i think i said his name right if i didn't i'm sorry uh he uh but i i feel like 
if they do continue in the vein of what they've been doing, because you did have kind of a, a a couple of, well, you had the Penguin, you had the J- Joker, you had, you know, uh, the, the, the Riddler in the first film. I feel like they're going to stick with that, like having a few people, because it, it really does give, give a vibe that the city is kind of decayed and gross and, and there's a lot of really disgusting people like that he has a, he, he's got a lot of work batman's got a lot of work yeah on his head, basically. A lot of work. <laughs> and I, i'd really be curious to see what they would do with the joker because out of all mm-hmm. his his uh nemeses he's like he's bat well he's batman's arch nemesis or you know um and he's He's just nuts. Like he just does stuff for the hell of it. You know, he just he's just kind of a chaos agent. I thought again, yeah. I thought it was really cool how they did the Riddler in the last movie because he was just a terrorist. He was just yeah. a, he was just a straight up terrorist. And normally, well, you know, he's that he is such a phenomenal actor. That he that is a hell of a good performance. And I I he's always the nicest guy in the world, but just he plays the weirdest dudes in every movie. <laughs> yeah, right. What what's his name? Uh, oh, Paul shit. Dano. Yeah, Paul Dano. Dano. Yeah, Paul yeah, Dano. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's he's like I I've interviewed him a few times, and he's just the sweetest, most gentle, and that was that performance was haunting. It was legitimately un because again, you know, you we've seen kind of it throughout superhero movies superhero stories you see these characters kind of so over the top like you said this guy is a real just a a terrorist just a very fucked up guy who who has to be fair he has some real issues he he was screwed over and he i again i think that's what makes a villain interesting is that why people do you, you know you have michael myers so from halloween He's just a guy that goes crazy, kills his sister, whatever. Uh, usually people are bad because they're the environment they grew up in, uh, whatever's going on. You don't need to say that you don't need to do a, a biography of each fucking character to do that. Mm-hmm. But you can leave little hints. And they did a really marvelous job. Paul did a really good job with that. Yeah. You felt kind of sympathy for him. In a way, yeah, yeah, that and that's that's a really good point too because uh, I think one of the one of the really interesting things about how they laid out his character in this movie is the similarities in you know how he and Bruce were both orphans, but the differences in their experiences, you know, and that's some of what the Riddler was talking about in that he was like, you know, Bruce, Bruce, and you thought you thought he knew Bruce was Batman, but it turned out no, he didn't actually know, but for a while you thought he did. And, um, you know, he was talking about Bruce, you know, his his parents died, but he was up in that tower looking down on everybody else with all his money. And then he was talking about his experience in the orphanage where babies would die because of how cold it was. Rats would be biting at at, at people's fingers and stuff. And then he really, you know, uh, went in depth with the corruption of the city when you found out that Falcone basically runs the law enforcement uh, in, in the whole thing. And so it would, you know, it, it, there, there's just there was so much story there. Uh, but, you know, it's just like ma- ma- maybe hundreds of thousands of people don't have to die for, for you to prove your point. But 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 he thought that that was the case. But again, yeah. Matt, Matt Reeves just really set the tone for for what this uh, for, for what his version of Batman is all about. Now, I'm really curious to see what um, uh, James Gunn is going to do. With, with everything in DC in general, I have I have no idea what to think at all. I've seen a few things. I mean, yeah. I'm really curious about what he's going to do with Batman because that'll be that you know that that'll be something totally different. None of the characters from Matt Reeves, well, the actors from Matt Reeves, yeah. That. Um, and from what I've seen for his Superman movie, again, won't know till I see it. But he's he's yeah. putting a lot of extra characters in it. Um, he's putting crypto the super dog in it so i'm hoping i'm hoping there's not too much going on at once but again i don't know you know what i mean like i have no clue so yeah if 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 he makes it work then he'll make it work but i think that matt reeves i highly doubt james gunn's batman will be anywhere near as dark as uh as matt reeves version no way no (laughs) no i mean need to be either no, Matt Reeves created a. It's not a superhero movie. It's a. It's a detective story. It's a crime. Yeah, movie. 
Yeah. And that's why it's, it's, I think that's why I kind of, because I, dude, I've been doing this for a long time. I've seen, I, I've had, I've sat through every one of these superhero movies for, for, you know, from the great, like the dark Knight to guardians of the galaxy to, you know, the eternals and stuff like that. I, I missed uh, Morbius. I've missed a couple, but I've missed a few lately, but it, it was so refreshing to see a very realistic take on this subject and especially create a very realistic i don't know i i connected to those characters in the batman more than i did and i love dude i love the tim burton the first two movies and i still think michelle pfeiffer as catwoman is probably one of the highlights of the entire you know everything batman she was fucking great in that mm -hmm. but i i think that there is something about I don't know this kind of like it's such a timeless story too because you can do it any way and the audiences seem to be fine with the fact that this is there's going to be different stories there's going to be different tales there's going to be different actors playing these characters i just wonder how i it's gonna get a little confusing after a while. <laughs> yeah yeah and then too again there's so there's so many animated versions of it, the the, yeah. the animated series then there was um the batman that the same artists who did you remember the uh, jackie chan adventures yeah so i that 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 was uh they they created a batman show that was on for several years that's pretty cool um and then there's so many like just uh batman movies the you know ju the uh the justice league justice league unlimited i mean it's just so much and again this is just our first episode just you know kind of uh vaguely talking about batman but there's so much to go into you know so we, do, we haven't even were... talked about lego batman <laughs> right right exactly we got lego batman we got all and then the the, the video game series the uh, arkham series yeah um i don't know if you played any of those but the best the best batman game to me that i played is uh arkham knight it's so good and, and kevin conroy he he did the voice uh the voice in that too that guy's a legend, man. I like even not a comic book guy, not not really knowledgeable about that. You, he's that man is a legend. Yeah, everyone loves that guy. And <laughs> he, I think he went to he went to Juilliard, I believe. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, and, and and what I think one of the coolest things about his story, among other things, is you know how he said basically he he never really planned to voice Batman. He never really thought he was going to do it. And that's just so enigmatic of how life goes. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, a lot, your, your story and how you uh, got into re reviewing movies and interviewing actors and stuff, like you didn't particularly plan for it. I mean, you were, you were lined up for it. You were the right guy for it, but you know, I'm in, in the same, like with me with TYT, like I, you know, I, I have a high school diploma. I'm not particularly, you know, on paper qualified to do what I do. I do yeah. just fine at it, but I had no clue I would be I would be doing this type of stuff. Yet here I am. So I think that that's really that's really one of the uh, inspiring aspects of his story. And his voice is just so you know, it's just it's just so perfect for that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, did did he um he was a, a smoker, wasn't he? I uh, believe he, so. Yeah, I believe he died so. From cancer, I, I think he did. Yeah, because yeah. he yeah. wasn't that old. He was only in his sixties. Was he that? Oh my god, I didn't. I thought he was older. Yeah, no, I'm. I think he. I think he was in his mid. I think he was in his late sixties. Which you know, I mean, it's not super young, but in today's time, it's not. It's young. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's young. It's young for today. For sure. I mean, and <laughs> another benefit to a living in modern times. I mean, you know, the, it, unless you get sick. You can get up, you know, you can get up in the 80s and 90s and still be relatively, relatively fine. You know, the body yeah. can hold can hold up good. But that's some of why I've recently made the decision to to live sober and not just reflexively do stuff like that, because it, it adds up. You know what I mean? Like yeah. for, for me, it was four, you know, 14 years, basically, of just being high all the time. <laughs> Which was pretty great, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I mean, look, I, I, I'm a, I'm a weed guy. I like the edibles, uh, but it's, yeah. it's also something I, I, it was more. It's you know, I'm also a dad. I'm also I've got a life that I can't just be that. So I have to. That's limited. That's more medical. It helps me sleep. 
that kind of thing. But I was on him amphetamines and stuff too. So oh, it was a mi- it was, oh, yeah, it was a big it was a mixture. You feel it a- every day, every day. Uh amphetamine. I I went through I mean I went through this one binge with, with Coke, which again it, it was awesome until it wasn't anymore. Yeah, I, 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 can't, you know, I had a lot of fun with that shit, but yeah, I, I, we gotta have a whole episode just on that because there's oh, so yeah. many things we can talk about. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because look, <laughs> listen, the best cocaine stories are the ones where you thought you was gonna die. Okay, those, those those are the best cocaine stories, and I have several of those. So we definitely gonna have to do some oh, episodes shit. where we talk yes. about that, man. I'd have been so high. So, whoo, I remember one time. Man, I, I was because you know I, I tried to do it responsibly. I, I, I would use my cocaine like I do Ritalin. I'm gonna do yeah. some work while I'm on this stuff. Not a good idea. I don't recommend it. But man, <laughs> I was ripping coke all day, and I got a lot of research done. And then and then finally I was hungry. You know, yeah. which and man, I ate I ate and like my my blood started circulating like everything to get and man my high went from here to here because like my body started circulating i was like oh my god <laughs> i had to take i had to take a cold shower i was like what i was like oh. i was feeling my pulse man i survived obviously but yes I, I had, <laughs> yeah i have a lot but yeah we go ahead to do a whole episode where we just yeah, I, I had. Yeah. I was. I was just. At least for a while, I just like to not really smoke because I just want to get. I want to get used to being sober. Like I don't. Yeah. I want to know who I am, and, and, and with you know, just without all that stuff going on inside of me. So it's 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 definitely been a decision that that I'm personally proud of. Well, it sounds like a decision that you took a lot of time. And well, if I, if I mean, I want to go over this. I, this, this needs to be a full episode. But yeah, I do want to say, was there what was the one factor that just was like, okay, it's time. Um, honestly, meeting a girl I really liked. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, honestly, honestly, the uh, that that was it. Um, not by itself, but you know, I kind of move when I moved back to St. Louis from New Jersey that I've been yeah. living out there for eight years. And then when I got back here, you know, my whole thing was getting getting myself together, getting my finances together, kind of just figuring out where I'm going uh, yeah. moving forward and stuff like that. And um, I met a woman and and we we uh, dated for for a little bit, and then I just started to notice how my habits were getting in the way of me really connecting uh with with other people the way that i can and the way that i'd like to and also realizing that you know i've just kind of had enough of this you know like this isn't healthy it's it's a waste of money it's a waste of time and you learn eventually that you know i'm I'm just doing this because it's something to do you know what i'm saying like it's it's really being high is just something to do most of the time and so why don't I put my energy in, in, in other things instead of just constantly like living to keep myself intoxicated? No. And um, yeah, m- uh, meet, meeting a woman that and, and, and we still talk and stuff like that. And we're, we're still dating. But um, right. that really just I kind of realized that this is kind of getting in the way of that. And Obviously, you know, I started thinking about other things, but I think that was the catalyst. That 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 was definitely the catalyst. Um, just be, you know, uh, having being being in a time where I meet where I'm gathering a lot of insight and and going through a lot of introspection in general. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that that just that kind of was it. And interestingly enough, you know, oftentimes, uh, you know. Stuff like that, I think, can help inspire people to change in general. Even it, like, it could be different. It could be for your ch- your children. It could be maybe a relationship you have with your, your family members. You want to be there for them more. But I think something, unless something happens to where you are, to where you are forced to see how this impacts other people, yeah, I don't think you really can have that much insight about the damage you're doing to yourself and others. Because I mean, like I've spent so I spent a lot of time um, in isolation, which wasn't healthy. But when it's like that, you can tell yourself you can lie to yourself all day. Yeah, you I don't can. have a problem. I'm functioning. So what? This isn't a big deal. Sure. When really, I'm having heart palpitations every day. You know what I'm saying? So it's oh. like, you know, so after a while, I just kind of got to a point where it was like, enough of this. Like, let's. 
let's just back away. So yeah, so that's that's really what what did it for me. Well, I mean, dude, Aiden, you know, I give you so much credit for that. I've been I. I I watch, you know, I, I've gotten to see your career a little bit, and I think I do want to talk a, a lot about. I want to go in the future when we do this. I want to hear more about your growing up and how you kind of became who you are because it's a such an interesting story to me. And and I, you know, I saw you. Uh, I was Dr. Richie was talking about how incredibly smart you are, and I, you you are not as humble as you say you. You know, you're kind of humble yourself, dude. Because yeah. look, you're a smart fucking guy. Thank you. And then, you know, this is the reason we, we, we wanted to do this together because we wanted it, we thought it would work. And we we're like, there's something about that, that I, I just think you're, you're so, you're an incredible guy, incredible guy. I appreciate that. Fucking fun. <laughs> likewise, like, likewise, brother, likewise. And again, I think one of the cool things about what we're doing is there's so much that we can touch that other, yeah. that, that people can relate to um you know what i mean so I, I definitely would love to to get more into that and speaking of dr richie he's he's somebody that i really look up to um, he's amazing he's just yeah he he really is i mean every time you turn your head he's getting a street named after him or some shit like that <laughs> you know what i'm saying like he, i mean the dude he and and he's he struggled a lot too he you know in his in his youth he was uh in and out of jail and yeah. now he i mean he has a he has a phd in quantum physics oh my god like, yeah, like what? Like, you know what I'm saying? That that has like nothing to do with, with politics. But yeah, he has a PhD in quantum physics and he's on the board of a bunch of stuff. He's just all and he and he gives so much of himself for uh to to make the world good. And I personally yeah. believe that at the end of the day, all of us, uh, among other things, part of what we're here for is to make the world better and to make the world good because as human beings we have the ability to be to, to think about it at all. You know, like we have the ability to think forward and backwards in time like other animals don't. And I think that after a while, it's just like, you know, I'm not going to be here forever, but there will be many people who come after me. And so what am I really doing to make this world a better place for them? And Dr. Richie, he's definitely somebody who inspires me to uh, to do that. So. so well, yeah. That's on, dude, and I, I think that carries through with what you do. And I, I, we need that. We need the positivity in the world. We need to. We need a little empathy. We need a little caring because it does seem like we're people are very angry, pissed yeah. off. You yeah. know, and we and shit. I'm angry and pissed off sometimes. You know what I'm saying? We all Damn. we all are. But what what what? How are we gonna hone that? Are we gonna let it take us over? Are we gonna let it consume us? Or are we gonna sit with it for a little while? and then let that energy turn into something more positive so again i think that that's why i'm very excited about what we're doing i'm going to work very hard in addition to us doing these recordings i'm you know we both we both got to work on the promotions and yeah. stuff like that and there's, Take there's my ass on this i'm terrible <laughs> <laughs> we're we, we gonna get it done man we, we will get it I, done. Here's the, I just have faith in this i think what we're doing is fun and I, it's i i i think it's there's there's a reason this happened yes you know, absolutely. so absolutely, yeah. and, and this is just day one. And I think that uh, I, I, I think this is great, man. I think that we opened up talking about Batman pretty solid. There's plenty more to discuss. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we'll we'll figure out uh, that, you know, what days we'll do this after a few. We'll, we'll be doing this live. We'll stream live. I can't and, wait, uh, yeah, I can't wait yeah, that. absolutely. So, so yeah, if there's if there's anything else that you want to close out with, I think that uh, I think that we got some good material here. I think we. I mean, you know, obviously, I know. Oh, I have a. I have a. a my wife gave us a suggestion for the name. Okay, what's up? How about JJ Roadhouse? JJ Roadhouse. I like that. It's shorter and more succinct. Yeah, I got that. And actually, I put I put J and J Roadhouse for this, but JJ Roadhouse, I like that. So we're gonna change that up. I okay. dig it. And I I, I think I think that's it. I don't think there's much else. I don't think we need to go searching for much else. I think that that works. I think we're good, man. Yes, I think absolutely. I think, I, I'm dude, honestly, like it's so this is so much fun. I'm so glad we're doing this. Hell yeah, absolutely. And I, I appreciate everything. Uh, I appreciate you believing in me, and I'm looking forward to a whole lot, and I'm looking forward to our friendship developing. Me too, so, dude. So, yeah, so that was the first episode of JJ Roadhouse, yeah. and uh, I had a great time. We both did, and we will be seeing y'all soon. So y'all take it easy. Take it easy, guys. All right. Hey, now. 
Thank you so much for tuning in here at Politics and Paper. If you like what I do and you support my work, go ahead and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it and it really helps to support what we do here.